Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today we're returning to the Doll's House renovation and to a new room. Well, I say to a new room. We're not physically going to be starting on the room itself today, but on something to go in it. I'm not racing in and um, starting on the floor and the walls of this room because I'm also having to deal with the electrics. I wired my doll's house somewhere in the region of 15 years ago and the wiring, which was at best a kind of um, fudged together attempt on my part, has not stood the test of time. I had no idea what I was doing. I'm going to be honest, I didn't know what I was doing, but I made it light up and it looked really, really nice. But um, wires are suffering because of how I've um, fitted them in. And um, obviously technology has moved on. And now my entire house could be lit by batteries. That wasn't possible when I did my house. So I do have an advantage these days in that I am married to a man who is um, an electrician by trade. He loves all things electronic and he's undertaken to um, bring my doll's house lighting into the 21st century. So that is actually happening um, behind the scenes, so to speak. But I don't want to um, complete another room and then have to move everything out to fit wiring in and that kind of thing. So I'm going to be concentrating in the first place on things that will go in the room and then we'll um, work our way up to the actual um, decor of the room. When I start a room, I start by planning things out. So I've got my sketchbook out. I've also got my um, notebook, which you've seen a few times now. I decide what I want in that particular room, do a bit of a brainstorming um, exercise. Now, not necessarily everything that I write down at this point will happen, and quite likely more things will get added as the room starts to come together. But I need to have at least a rough idea in my head of where I'm going with it. Now, we're going into the attic. Um, this is the room, the other main room on the top floor of my house. And I want it to be crowded and um, it's kind of forgotten, but also a place that is used by the younger members of the household as a bit of a... Um, impromptu playroom. So that gives me lots and lots of scope for um, things that I can put in there. One of the main things that I want is I want a dressing up box, except I don't want it to be a dressing up box, as in I want this to be a piece where some clothes have been put away some point in the past and forgotten about and then found by the um, youngsters and um, sort of pulled out for their own um, amusement. And that's what I'm going to be working on today is I'm going to be working on my dressing up box. My main material for the trunk is going to be my usual um, food packaging. This is a bit of cereal box. Um, but what I've actually done is I have prepared some already, which is actually two layers that I've stuck together and then I dried. And that one hasn't dried very flat, so I will be careful where I use that. But um, it's twice the thickness, so it's nice and strong. You could use um, mount board if you'd got it, but in keeping with my ethos of using as much as possible that would otherwise go to waste, I've... Um, made my own. Now the kind of trunk that I'm making is not one of the sort of standard top opening. This is what is known as a wardrobe trunk and this is made of two usually equal sides 
and it open it stands up and it opens um, vertically I think that's right yeah um, so I'm making two basic um, boxes which are going to be the two halves of my trunk and the basic um, dimensions of it is it's going to be four inches high um, two inches wide and a an inch deep on each side so it's going to make quite a substantial piece once it's put together um, so obviously I've cut five pieces for each side that work with those um, measurements now I do know that I'm going to have to trim the smaller pieces to account for the width of those which I think I'm gonna to have to take off approximately two millimeters now I do apologize that I work between inches and millimeters I was raised on a mixture of the two systems officially we learnt in metric but um, feet and inches were still definitely around and when working in um, 112 scale inches are definitely easier to work out your basic measurements um, but millimeters are far easier to work out the smaller bits than um, sixteenths and thirty seconds of an inch so I've got my basic pieces and I have also cut another piece the same size as my back and front which I will have to trim um, which is going to go to form the front of the drawers in one half um, but I'll explain more about that in due course now I'm going to begin by sticking one of the long pieces onto my um, back piece and I've got some glue here and a handy cocktail stick to apply it and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line of glue along the edge of my side piece this is you know sort of standard um, construction now I'm going to put that as near to the edge as I can I want it to be nice and um, lined up and I am just going to lift it up to make sure that I get it where I want it although I can't hold on to it because it needs um, now this needs obviously to be kept nice and straight and I'm just going to run my cocktail stick along the outside edge to remove any excess glue it saves me having to um, try and file it off later and then I've got um, a little something that I've knocked up with some Lego which just gives me a nice right angle and then I've got another piece that's going to fit inside but I do need to just um, remove excess glue in there because otherwise it'll end up sticking to the cardboard and we don't want that so all I then do is I can leave that to dry and um, yeah quite straightforward and if you've noticed um, you know it won't fit round the other way because obviously we've got the nobles on there all you do is you just um, swap the ends over and then it can go the other way around I trimmed down and stuck into place the two shorter pieces and I'm ready to put this one in place now as you can see I've applied glue to the two um, ends of the small pieces and to the long side of this one and I'm just going to um, pop this into place just making sure that it um, fits as neatly as possible of course it all wants to bend 
again I'm going to wipe off as much excess glue as possible and slide it about a bit so that it actually is all in the right kind of places and I will just um, remove as much of the excess from inside as possible and I'm just going to put my little um, my little Lego piece in place and allow that to dry. With my two boxes complete it's time to move on to the interior. Now a wardrobe trunk um, seems to usually have hanging on one side and drawers on the other and then there is sometimes an accessory box that sits underneath of the hanging section. I'm not sure if I'm going to make that yet but we shall see. Um, now I want one of my drawers to be open, the rest of the drawers are going to be false because um, I'm not that much of a perfectionist and when the unit, um, the trunk rather, is stood up it's going to be at an angle maybe something like that because um, that's where the hinge would be along the long side um, and then I want to draw open and it's going to be the bottom drawer. Now as I said I cut another piece that was the same size as the back and actually trim that down so that it would fit inside and then I've cut off another inch from the bottom which is going to allow for my um, my drawer. I used the piece that I cut down to make one support and I've cut another one which is going to go at the other end and I'm going to stick those onto here and then that will then fit inside the box and um, we'll support that up so that it's um, flush with the um, top. I say flush I'm actually going to then put some fake drawer fronts out of a single layer of this cardstock so this actually sits in a little bit recessed um, and then I'm going to cover it with some pretty paper um, but this is going to give me the um, wherewithal to actually have a open drawer. My um, front for my um, fake drawers is now together and that will be glued into the box side of the trunk like so. And as you can see, that's ready now to put my fake drawer fronts on, which I may just do out of the paper. I'm not 100% sure yet. Or I may use um, some lighter weight cardstock just to back it, just to um, give it a little bit more detail. Now, for the bottom, obviously, I need a drawer. So, I've got here five pieces to make a drawer. The back isn't quite as tall but it doesn't matter because that's not going to be visible, that's going to be inside there. I want the drawer obviously part open and um, so I'm going to start um, sticking my drawer together by attaching my front this way on. Um, it's meant for a little bit of fiddling about with cutting my sizes. Um, but I've actually measured this and I've done it so that it fits in there rather than giving exact measurements because um, you know what it's like. Um, exact measurements don't always fit when it comes to making a drawer. So I'm going to put together my drawer now and then um, this side, the base of it, will be complete. My little drawer is complete. It's nothing special. It needs going over as does the rest of the piece with some glue around the edges just to um, tidy them up but it fits into the gap in the trunk more or less and it will look really good when it is um, glued in place. It's going to be glued something like that and then obviously we will have the second piece possibly at right angles like that. They seem, that seems to be the right angle open seems to be the way that these are sort of shown as being used. 
and I like it. So I'm quite pleased with this. I've got a nice drawer that I can have overflowing with um, stuff. So on to the next step. For the hanging side of the trunk, I have decided I am going to make um, an accessory box. Now, some of these, from what I can tell, look like they are basically a small suitcase. I'm making something a little bit different and to be fair, I'm sort of um, winging it a bit, but I'm going to make something that's going to work um, for what I want this piece to do. So I've cut all the pieces here from my double thickness um, card and I've got a top and bottom, front and back and then two sides and I'm going to stick it together pretty much the same as I did the um, main box. Um, so I'll begin with my bottom which I have actually marked and I will glue on one of the pieces, do the sides so I'm going to start that now. As before, I'm using my bricks to um, give me a nice, um, a nice angle to the um, piece as it's drying. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check the fit in here. Oh, that's, as you can see, I've actually left a little bit at the front because I don't want it to fit um, flush with the front so that is going to work perfectly and I'm just going to get it out without damaging it and then I can actually glue in place the side piece and I will just check that I've got this the right way around so that I glue it on the correct sides and as with all of this it's about taking your time you don't need to use a lot of glue I'm probably applying more than I really need to because this glue is quite good. And I just stick it in place. And just take off the excess glue. And I'll put that into there and I'll step this piece into there and then again I'm just going to let that um, cure for a little while and then finish the box. The um, main body of my accessory box is complete and it fits in quite nicely and it's come out quite nicely so I just need to make the top. Now to do the top I have got a flat piece and I have got a second piece which is going to form a bit of a lip so if this was a real thing that would come down over the front so I'm just going to stick these two together now I'm not going to immediately glue the lid in place because um, part of the reason for making this box is to have more space for things to be overflowing so I am going to um, have it at a bit of an angle but I'm not sure what kind of an angle that yet so I will figure that one out and then probably use the paper that I'm going to cover the box with to um, provide at least part of the inch so as you can see, I've got my little bit of a lip which is going to fit on top of the box there. Now I'm just going to utilise my books again. Put it in the right way around and it'll work. And um, that's as far as I'm going to get with the accessory box for the moment. So I've got that and now it's on to the hanging um, section. I'm not sure what to call it, but I'm going to work on the bit where we, you'd have your angers and your, um, yeah, a bit of a rail for them to go on. In researching this kind of trunk, I've come to the conclusion that in most cases, the angers are not removable. That is, you've got a rail 
in this case I've got my little piece of dowling which is a bit on the long side but it'll do for this example that fits in from the back of the section to the open front obviously there'd be something holding it in place and then the angers would be fastened onto this rail and you just take the clothes off as required now Presumably in real life you'd be able to remove this to remove the angers to make life easier certainly for um, Loading it for packing it rather But mine are going to be sort of fixed into a little um, kind of contraption there and To make my anger what I've done is I have cut a piece of paper that actually fits into there so this in my case is a little bit under two inches by about an inch and three quarters i'm not going to make it that big but better to have more than you need than not enough and to get what i want i'm going to do the trick of folding it in half and um doing one half and then cutting it so i've got two identical sides um, I'm probably just going to go with something that is sort of vaguely triangular. Um, most um, basic coat hangers are vaguely triangular, but obviously not that deep. And I might make it a bit deeper so that I can actually look, make it look as if there is a um, rail that something could be folded over. Again, I'm not sure. I'm just going to have a play. I have created a little bracket just by taking a strip of my double thickness cardstock or you could use chipboard if you've got chipboard and scoring it so that I can bend it and then this will hold my um, cut now cut down piece of um, a dowel it's actually um, it's not a dowel actually it's part of a skewer and then this fits nicely I show you into the top of my um, hanging section. It will be glued to the back and to the top and will sit in the middle of there with that in place. None of it's in place yet because I want to um, paint everything, do the finishes before I actually finish putting it all together. Now obviously I now need my hangers and as I said I was going to make a paper template and here it is. It's not the best looking hanger in the world, but it will do for my purposes. And this is my template. And what I did is I drew around it again onto the double thickness cardstock and I cut one out and then I use that to cut out another five. So I've got six, six of these here. Now I am fortunate in that I've got a little hole punch, which punches a hole, which is the perfect size for my skewer. So as you can see, I can thread these on. And they're bunched up, obviously they'll be um, differently arranged once there's something hanging on them. And then that fits in there. And again, that will fit in the top of my wardrobe trunk. And that is actually the last part of the main construction of my trunk and um, I'm pleased with how it's coming together. I've um, pulled my pieces together um, because I think I'm going to leave this video at this point. Um, it's getting rather long and I've still got all the decorative bits to do, all the um, finishes and obviously I want to spend a little bit of time um, considering how I could dress it. So I'm going to leave this and then I will return with a second part in which I'll finish the trunk. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if you have please like, comment and subscribe and until next time, bye!